things. Fellow mathematicians, have you ever wondered if there's an easy way to keep track of all these trig identities? Well, there is, and we're gonna learn how to derive them in seconds by using Euler's formula. Now, before you go through this video, make sure you're comfortable with Euler's formula. I have a link down below to a video on that, so check that out. If you are comfortable with Euler's formula, let's go ahead and immediately apply it to deriving first the double angle identities. Now, how we're gonna use Euler's formula is we're gonna replace x here first with the double angle two theta. So let's write this as e to the i two theta. And we're gonna split this up using properties of exponents. I'm gonna write the right side here, splitting it up as e to the i theta times e to the i theta. Notice you can multiply the bases here so you can add the exponents going backwards. And we're just gonna apply Euler's formula to each of those complex exponentials. On the left side, we're gonna get cosine of two theta plus i sine of two theta. So let's write that down. And on the right side, we're gonna apply Euler's formula twice and basically multiply that out. So apply Euler's formula, cosine of theta plus i sine theta, and then multiply that by itself again. Cosine theta plus i sine theta. And all we have to do to derive the double angle identities, both of them, is just multiply that out. So if we expand that, looks like we're gonna get cosine squared of theta. Outers and inners will come out to be the same here. So we're gonna get plus two i sine theta times cosine theta. And then your last terms, be careful, you have i times i, or i squared, which is negative one. And then you have sine of theta times sine of theta, which we can write as sine squared of theta. All right, and we're basically done. I'm just gonna rearrange the terms on the right side. Notice we have some real quantities here, cosine squared minus sine squared, and then we have an imaginary quantity. So let me just group them together. I'll have cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, and then plus the middle term there. And I'm just gonna rearrange some of the factors. I'm gonna switch the order of the two and i, just to make the last step a little more obvious. And all this stuff equals that left side. I'm just gonna carry that down. Cosine of two theta plus i sine of two theta. All right, and how we get the double angle identities is we're going to equate the real parts on each side. So the real part here, cosine of two theta, real part of the right side, cosine squared minus sine squared. So we get our first double angle identity, cosine of two theta equals cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, which is one of the double angle identities. To get the other double angle identity for sine, now we're gonna equate the imaginary parts on each side, and what we get is sine of two theta equals two sine theta cosine theta. And that's how we use Euler's formula to get the double angle identities. With practice, this will take seconds. So great little tip during exams. Next up, let's get to the sum of angle identities, which is pretty much the same work here, just with different groupings of alpha and beta, basically in these sets of parentheses. Next, we're gonna replace x with alpha plus beta and derive the sum of angle identities. 
So let's start like we did before. On the left side, we'll have e to the i, but now alpha plus beta, that's your sum of angles term. And we're gonna apply our exponent rules due to the addition in that exponent. We're gonna split that up as a product of exponentials. We'll split that up as e to the i alpha times e to the i beta. And like before, we're gonna apply Euler's formula to all three exponentials. So on the left side, we're gonna get cosine of alpha plus beta plus i sine of alpha plus beta. You can probably see where this is going from the previous part. Now we just need to rewrite each of the complex exponentials on the right side where the angles are different, alpha and then beta. So we'll get cosine of alpha plus i sine of alpha, and then a similar set of terms, but with alpha replaced with beta. So we're gonna get cosine now of beta plus i sine of beta. Same thing as before, we just need to now expand that right-hand side and we have to be careful here, since the angles are not the same in each set of parentheses. We have alpha here, but beta there, so just be careful with your expanding. We're gonna have cosine alpha times cosine of beta. Next, go to your outers. We're gonna get i cosine alpha times sine of beta. Next up, the inner terms. We're gonna have i sine alpha times cosine beta. And now your last terms, you have i times i, i squared, which is negative one. And we have sine alpha times sine of beta. All right, now we have a few different types of terms here. Let's just go ahead and keep track of them. I'm gonna group the real parts together, and then I'm gonna factor i out from the terms that are containing the imaginary unit. Let me just write the left side down. Cosine of alpha plus beta plus i sine of alpha plus beta. And if we group the real parts or real terms on the right side together, we have cosine alpha times cosine beta minus sine alpha, sine beta. And we're also gonna group on the right side the imaginary parts together. And that's where we have cosine alpha, sine beta. And then plus sine alpha, cosine beta. And that is all of the work. Now we just need to equate the real parts on each side. Cosine alpha plus beta. Your real part on the right side is all the stuff without i. And we get one of the sum of angle identities. Cosine alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta. minus sine alpha, sine beta. And you know what to do from here. Now we're gonna equate the imaginary parts on each side. We get sine of alpha plus beta. And that should equal this imaginary part on the right side. All the stuff where we factored i out. This is cosine alpha, sine beta, plus sine alpha cosine beta. And there we have it. These are the sum of angle identities which are ridiculously simple to derive from scratch by using Euler's formula. 
This is a great trick, again, to use on exams if you ever need these. You probably memorized have some of them already, especially the double angle identities, but the sum of angles are definitely a little bit tricky to memorize. With Euler's formula, these take seconds, so definitely know how to go through this for your exams. Hope you enjoyed the short video. If you did, support the channel, like, and subscribe.